is a question that's often asked is all loss trauma. Do all those who have gone through loss feel it through a traumatic lens? I, I think everybody feels their loss differently. I've experienced the death of a friend, the death of an uncle. I've experienced the loss of a job, a career, a relationship, a dynamic, the loss of a connection, what I thought, what was, right? I've experienced all these different kinds of losses and they're almost like different levels of pain for me. As we've learned about trauma in general, it's woven into so many different categories of mental health. And there's big T trauma and little T trauma. So I don't think that all loss is trauma. No, but I think that some loss can turn into traumatic grief and it can turn into prolonged grief disorders. And so it really just depends on the experience, the person, what the person brings to that moment and experience of grief and loss too. Are, you How know, can someone the, know the difference? Am I experiencing traumatic grief? Is this turning into more of a traumatic grief process? I think if somebody lost somebody years ago and they're listening and they've never gotten counseling, never really identified deeper than I'm grieving the loss of something or identifying that they've lost something, then they really haven't worked through the different stages of really identifying where they're at, what they're feeling. I don't want people to diagnose themselves with prolonged grief disorder. Right. They actually never gave themselves the proper treatment they needed when the grief happened. But traumatic grief, when it turns into prolonged grief disorder, just according to the DSM-5, is that there's different distressing grief symptoms, which can feel a lot like the symptoms you'll feel in the five stages. You're having these distressing grief symptoms 12 months after you've lost somebody. Knowing what I do about trauma, the difference between a traumatic memory versus just a painful memory is that the traumatic memory feels like it's happening right there and then again, like you're reliving. The brain is processing it as if it's happening again versus I remember hurting about that. And so I wonder if that's also incorporated in this long-term traumatic grief process of I'm grieving today like I did the week it happened. Mm -hmm. I am still not functioning very well. I'm not, I'm not able to move past that overwhelmed, consumed stage that is in the beginning. For everyone, that's a different timeline, but if it's moving past a year, then it is considered more of a traumatic response. The traumatic symptoms of dissociating or numbing, and those are some of the distressing symptoms that they notify as if those are present a year later. So just to help you become aware of what you're going through and maybe to help you sometimes people feel like, if you can just help me figure out what this is, then I can start working through it, right? Mm -hmm. Or people mm -hmm. start thinking that they should be over it by now. You just really have to show up for yourself bigger than you think. Oftentimes, tell me more what you mean about that, showing up bigger than you think. Oftentimes I will tell my clients that I want you to one day be your own therapist. I don't want you to need me, right? I am wanting to be here to help you find the healing that you need so that you can be exactly what you need to be for yourself. Sometimes when a friend asks us something, we're able to give them the response that we know we need to give ourselves. And so we'll, I'll just say like, put yourself back in the therapy room, what would your therapist say? Right. Mm -hmm. um, and can you speak that over yourself? Um, but loving yourself, giving so yourself hard. the same compassion and permission that you would give someone else. Someone That's else so called hard. in because their dog passed away. You would, of course, take the time you need. We don't always give ourselves the time we need when we would easily give it to others. That makes a lot of sense. And yet there isn't these expectations of you should be at a certain point, at a certain time. I think more of what the DSM is trying to categorize is when someone's getting stuck and when it does need extra support to help that person start to find who they are again and start to integrate back into the world again on the other side of that grief. And maybe you've gone through grief therapy and you've gone through the five stages and then something happens along the way and you're re-experiencing some of these distressing symptoms. Maybe you have to go back through. I mean, there's no playbook that said like you completed the course here's your grade. you're done you're done it's gonna be great now yeah mm -hmm. unfortunately different um, things but... can trigger the grief back different 
For example, I went through something when I was a teenager and it was very painful, very difficult. And my son is getting to that age and I'm starting to feel the somatic symptoms of how it felt back then in that car accident. So it's interesting on how the trigger is by seeing the mannerisms of that age through some, through someone so close to me. Yeah. The fear is knocking. Mm -hmm. It's your body showing back up saying, Hey, do we need to come back and protect you? And so just recognizing said. that and saying, Hey, Hey, thanks for checking in on me. I might have needed you and I might need you, but hopefully we're at a different place in our journey that we're equipped with a new kind of resilience or understanding 